Okay. Right? Yes. Paul. All right, well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this Tuesday, January the 24th, 2023, public meeting of the Board of Garrett County Commissioners. I want to welcome everyone in our audience and everyone online that's joining us today. Uh, I'd like to call this meeting to order. If uh, everyone would please stand for the pledge with me, which the flag is now in the back corner. And at the conclusion of the pledge, please uh, remain standing for the prayer by Pastor Brown. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this winter day that you've given us and the blanket of snow that reminds us that under the beauty we're seeing, spring is already coming. Help us not take lightly the moments we have uh, remaining of this winter. To the business of our commissioners and their team, it's already been conducted and to be conducted. We ask you to give them guidance and wisdom. In the midst of their demands for their positions, I ask you to breathe life into their work and breathe life into time spent with family and friends. And to those who direct our mental health for our community, we ask for you to give them peace of mind as they seek to heal and help provide hope to many of our residents. As we look to celebrate Blind Skiers program and opportunities to walk for our area charities, we ask you just to say thanks for the opportunity to partner in bringing life and vitality to our county. May the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts give you honor today as we gather. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Please be seated. Thank you, Pastor. <clears throat> Mr. Knoll, any additions, deletions, changes to the public meeting agenda? Uh, yes, sir. I would like to add a presentation by Ms. Uh, Kathy Schaefer uh, on a donation of some property to the county. All right. Duly noted. Uh, can I get a motion to approve the public uh, meeting agenda as amended? So moved. We have a motion. We have a second. Second. Motion and a second. Agenda is amended, approved by mutual consent. Everybody got a copy of the minutes in advance of the meeting. Are there any questions or concerns with the minutes? Hearing none, can I get a motion to approve the minutes? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Motion, we have a second. Second. Motion, a second. Minutes approved by mutual consent. The first uh, order of business on our agenda today is a uh, proclamation, uh, which is exciting to be able to give out to uh, the Deep Creek Lake Lions Club. And Brian Chaney is with us today. And I'll, Brian, I'll just ask you to stand and then uh, I'll read this. And Family is out. Absolutely. We'll have both of you guys come up. I hope you have your speech prepared. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it's only half an hour long. <laughs> good enough. Uh, I do want to uh, bestow this January 24th, 2023 Board of Garrett County Commissioner's commendation to the Deep Creek Lake Lions Club for the Blind Skier Program 50th anniversary. We, the Board of County Commissioners of Garrett County, Maryland, and citizens of Garrett County are happy to join together to extend our sincerest congratulations to the Deep Creek Lake Lions Club Blind Skier Program on its 50th anniversary. Since 1973, the club has been bringing visually impaired children to Garrett County to provide them with the opportunity to learn to downhill ski and experience other forms of wintertime outdoor recreation. The program has become a well-known example of the strong community and selfless spirit of Garrett Countyans and has served as a model for other similar programs in the region. Over the course of the past 50 years, the program has served hundreds of visually impaired children and provided an even larger number of local high school and adult volunteers with the opportunity to experience the reward of service to others. Therefore, the Board of Garrett County Commissioners commend the Deep Creek Lake Lions Club for its continued service to our local community and the visually impaired, signed by Commissioners Titchnell, Savage, and myself. Congratulations. I can tell you as an employee of the school system and seeing our kids go out and help others. I know they really cherish that opportunity. They look forward to it. Uh, we appreciate what you do for the community. Thank you. Speech? 
well, we didn't have anything prepared. Uh, you know, I've uh, been doing, you know, working with Blinds Gears uh, as a volunteer with Wines Club for about know, three or four years, something like that. And um, these kids are so inspiring. I mean, you know, they, they, I don't know if they know that they're blind sometimes. I mean, the things that they can do that we can't do, and there's one kid, uh, his name is uh, Derek, that he actually writes code, computer code, really good code. In fact, he was going to help me do some home automation at one point. So I, and he looked it up online and sent me an email. I mean, you know, they're, they've so overcome what we call a handicap that sometimes I think we're the handicap one, you know? So it's really inspiring just to be around them, to see how well they ski, see how they see life, the energy that they have. Um, you know, we really come away with each one of these sessions that we have with them inspired and feeling better about the world with, with more hope. So um, I, we get a lot of benefit out of it, and they absolutely love it. So do you have anything to say? No, I think you covered it. Okay, Pamela <laughs> South is our uh, secretary with the club. She does a great job and keeps all the workings and everything working right. And, and now you guys have a, an event coming up that we do. Uh, people can buy a ticket to to help support the program. Yep, sure. Uh, do. Just go online. Go online to blindskiers50.com. I believe it's the website. You can always go to our website too. But we have the 50th. It's been 50 years, obviously, and we're having an anniversary gala. And Connor's going to be our MC. And uh, it's going to be a really big event. We have already 200 people signed up for it. We still have uh, tickets for sale until the 31st of January. We have uh, Second Wind, the bluegrass band, that's going to play for a while. We have someone else playing keys during dinner. It's going to be a fancy dinner. So, you know, it's been, COVID's been here, so it's probably been two or three years since we've got that tux or that suit out. Let's dig it out. Let's go have fun. Let's dress up. And uh, you can wear outright ski if you want, or I know my wife's picking out which long dress she's going to wear. I'm picking up a new Tux Cumberman, so you know it's going to be fun. And uh, I know there's going to be a silent auction, there's going to be a live auction. Uh, we're going to raise a lot of money for the community. And, and the speaker. Uh, and the speaker, yes. And we have uh, Ryan McKeever, who is a Paralympic skier. He's going to come mm -hmm. speak and talk about how he overcame his quote unquote handicap to do what he's done and be as successful as he, as he has. And we have some of the blind skiers come up and uh, talk about some of the things they've done as well. So it's going to be right in the middle of our blind skier season. It runs until February 15th. So they'll be, well, actually, some of the kids are there, too. Start today? It's starting today, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We have, I think, 20 skiers this year. I think we have 30 high school students coming. We have uh, about I don't know, 12 or 15 adults that are helping. So um, it's truly a community effort to make it all happen. Well, if you guys want to come up, we'll all give right. this to you. I know the, the paper's here. OK. Picture for come the paper. Up. Where do we go? Let's right go here. Down here. OK. I'll give you this. OK. <clears throat> you smile at the telephone. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. Ryan, good to see you. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, next uh, item on our agenda is a update for the Run For It event uh, from the Tucker Community Foundation and uh, Hannah. Yeah, All right, know. Hannah Snyder, I'll Hannah, turn it over to you. I have executive director, uh, David Cooper. Would be David, thank exactly. you for coming. All yeah. right. Just a little more information. Um, can you report for you guys? Uh, one to two things. Um, so the we come to give kudos to you guys as well because with the seed money you can see on the second page and Hannah's going to talk about that a little bit what actually comes back to Garrett County because we serve eight counties seven in West Virginia of course one in Maryland so it's a synopsis to see what you guys help with and bring money back to the county and we'll talk about that and then we'll let Hannah talk about run for it and I'll touch up on our annual report which you guys have a copy Right. Yeah, so um, like David said, we're here to just ask for those funds for Run For It. Um, a little bit about that race. We just aim to raise awareness for um, nonprofit profits and civic organizations um, and other charities in the Tucker Community Foundations region of the seven counties in West Virginia and then Garrett County, Maryland. Um, this program just promotes that healthy activity of getting out there and running or walking for the cause. Um, as well as encouraging that local people like the philanthropy. Um, so every year we ask the eight county commissions in our service area to <coughs> give us some funds that we can distribute to um, the nonprofits who sign up for teams for Run For It. Um, 
and then that's distributed on a sliding scale for each of them. So on that second page, it kind of shows you the four um, the four nonprofits who participated last year, um, and then how your funds were distributed, as well as um, the total amount of donations that they were actually able to get during this six month um, campaign. So. I know last year you guys just um, gave us $2,000 and we were hoping to maybe get 2,500 from you this year just to distribute that a little bit further for the community. Um, we asked for a range of like 1,000 to 5,000. So I think that we have two counties that are in that 5,000 range. So just trying to scoot you up each year a little bit to be able to distribute that out. Um, do you have any yeah. questions? And remember, the funds that the commission comes only come back to Garrett County. Right. That's the only people who can apply for the, get that money. That's correct. So it helps you on your end. The little seed money, you can see what it ends up to you, what, 30? Almost 30,000 last 30, year. 30,000 that actually came back to the county because of those things. So it's, it's really nice to get the word out because for us, as you can see, we want to get more teams started. And I'm hoping Laura can help us do that because as you can see, she got a big chunk of money in there, and she has the last uh, few, years. few years, even during COVID. So if we can get people to get more of the word out, there'll be a lot more money coming back to Garrett County. So if there's a group or organization represented here or online that would like to participate in Correct. this, how does, one, how does one do that? We have a website and um, <clears throat> information. Uh, business card has the website on it. It's uh, www.tuckerfoundation.com that you can just go on to. Tuckerfoundation.net. Oh, sorry, net. net. Yeah. So it's on the website, and then um, they can find Run For It and actually register their team. Right, and then registrations will start on April 1st. So once that starts, we'll kind of do a social media campaign and boost that out to the different county or different counties um, to gain more participation. So yeah, I'd like to see more than more than four from Garrett this year for sure, and I think we can. All right. Any questions from the board? Okay. Yeah, the other, the only last thing I gave you an annual report um, because the foundation itself has 37 million in assets. So there are a lot of projects we're looking at, and as you know, Garrett um, County falls in our service area. Um, we would like to help with programs or projects, just as you guys have just done the um, new performing arts. Mm -hmm. There's things like that we'd like to get involved with. Um, board's very interested in those kind of things so if there's things that you see that foundation can actually help with because again we're going to start in this once we got through COVID and everything there's probably going to be grant sizes anywhere between um, 500 I mean $50,000 to $80,000 generally we've been giving out 10 10 has been our highest because of the way the market and other things have been going but with our investments and the things, we see that number is going to jump dramatically here in the next few years, and that will continue on because, as you know, people who put money in the foundation for a cause, it's always growing, and they we just use the interest off of that to pay what they're, you know, is it for the school? Is it EM, EMS? Is it, you know, whatever the cause it is um, that they left money for? And that's our whole point is they left the money to sure. make a project continue on forever and it's our job to make sure that money is used the way they wanted it to be used. Excellent. So. It's another little plug for you. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank appreciate your time. All right. Thank you. Good to you guy on the block. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next uh, item on the agenda, uh, Garrett County Department of Financial Services Purchasing Division. Mr. Knowles, pinch hitting for them. What do you got for us? Yes, sir. I have uh, two bids for your consideration. The first one is bid number 22-1201, Garrett County Detention Center, padded cell <coughs> conversion project. Uh, one bill was received from Cornerstone Detention Products in the amount of $34,000. There is uh, money in the budget for this this program, and this is part of a state requirement. Um, the second, go ahead. Okay. We'll take both yeah. of this. The second bid mm -hmm. is co is a contract award. This is a uh, request for a proposal for the design build of the fiber optics route from Oakland 219 to Table Rock. 
Uh, it's RFP number 22-0927. It's EDA project number 01791509059. So this is it to extend fiber from the Oakland 219 area uh, out to um, the Table Rock area. We received one bid, Pillar Innovations, in the amount of $792,110. Uh, funding for this project is provided by an EDA grant. Uh, the grant amount was $960,000. So we are under bid for uh, the construction phase of this project. Uh, and uh, we may be able to use some of that remaining funds uh, towards other aspects of this project. Excellent. And just another uh, effort on our part to continue to expand high quality internet to uh, more remote areas of the county. Any questions on either bid? Hearing none, we'll take both of them as a slate. Can I get a motion to approve the uh, Garrett County Detention Center uh, padded cell conversion project to Cornerstone Detention Products for $34,000 and the uh, design build for the fiber optic expansion from Oakland to Table Rock to Pillar Innovations for $792,110. I make a motion to approve both of those bids. All right, we have a motion, we have a second. A second. Motion and a second, question of the motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries. Uh, next uh, item on the agenda was the amended part of the agenda. And uh, very happy to uh, ask the mayor of the great town of Oakland, Kathy Schaefer, uh, who is not here in that official capacity, but another even better capacity uh, to come on up and uh, make a very exciting announcement. Yes. Okay. You can, wherever you're comfortable. I'm going to stand by Brian. There you okay. go. There we go. Make everyone comfortable. <laughs> uh, 26 years ago this month, a deputy of the sheriff's department was killed on Fourth Street, David Livingston. Um, it happened to be on my property that my husband, Rick Schaefer, who's passed away 24 years ago, and I purchased. Um, we were approached a little while afterwards if we could do a memorial there for David Living Good. And of course we said yes. Why I have not thought of this sooner, I do not know too much on the plate, I guess. But today I would like to give that to the Board of Commissioners of Garrett County, Sheriff's Department and so forth, to have that for themselves no matter what happens to me or the property. And that is, if you have not seen it, it's on 4th Street, directly behind what used to be the, um, what is it? The Army Navy Store. Army Navy Store. Navy Store, thank you very much. Yeah, now it's social services. And Schaefer Ford was right next to it, that's why we bought the property to go around. There is, there's a flag there, there's a plaque there, and it is not very big, but it is well maintained. But that is why Bryson is here today, and I would like to the all the deeds in the mail type of thing. <laughs> <laughs> and they're, they're signing it and getting it okay, but I wanted something to present to you today. Well, we're very thankful. It means a lot to us. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, that concludes the business part of our meeting today. Uh, we're at time for uh, public comments and announcements. Before we take any comments from the audience, I would like to make two announcements. One, our next public meeting will be Monday, February the 6th, here uh, at the Garrett County Courthouse at 4 o'clock. Uh, so that'll be our next uh, public meeting. And I do want to address uh, something um, that is uh, a, a big deal to many people. So if, if you're impacted by this, you're very well aware of it. I've talked to multiple people in the last couple of weeks via email and phone call, and that is the uh, ass property assessments. Uh, so if you, you may or may not know, uh, there, there's a lot of uh, 
folks that need more information on this. So the property assessment is done by the state. It is not done by the county. The state does that for every jurisdiction in the state. It's a state uh, process. Uh, property tax assessments statewide have gone up uh, significantly in some places, most significantly in Garrett County, uh, at an average of 21% statewide. Our Garrett County average is the highest average in the state at just about 50% when you factor in residential and commercial combined. Now that's a third, uh, every year, a third of the county is reassessed. This year, the third of the county that was reassessed is the area that comprises a lot of Deep Creek. So we're taking our highest property values and now they're being reassessed. And some of those assessments are doubling uh, and even more in some cases. We understand that that is a significant challenge for people. Uh, we are very well aware of that, and we are actively looking for ways to mitigate that for our residents as best we can. This will follow the budget process. Uh, the state is very clear, very concise on things that we have to do, uh, and we'll do those. Uh, we are going to attempt to address this specific piece a little earlier in the process than we typically do because we understand the significance of this for many. No matter what we do, nothing will go into effect until July 1 uh, in the new budget cycle. But just so that people know that we are actively working on it, we're aware of it, uh, we're gonna try to get to it a little bit early. It's not gonna be next week, uh, but it, you know, our, our typical budget process is just beginning now. Uh, it typically heats up in late March, uh, early April, and then concludes right around early June. Um, and it's been that way ever since we've been commissioners. Uh, and, and so what we deal with on the property tax with the assessments called the constant yield. And you're gonna hear a whole lot about constant yield in the next couple of months. Uh, we are looking at that, but we are aware uh, that assessments are up significantly, especially in the reassessed areas. And we are aware that we do lead the state and there are some things that we can do uh, to try to help with this. And that's what we're analyzing. Uh, as a side note to that, for everyone that's listening, for the newspaper, for, for information of the general public, there's a process to challenge the assessment uh, or to, to double check the assessment, if you will. Uh, you can contact the, the local assessment office. Uh, Phil Smith is our local director. He's gonna love the fact that I mentioned his name in public, uh, but that's his job. He does a good job. Uh, if you want to question, you know, why did my pro how, how in the world could my property double in value in, in this period of time? They can reassess it. Maybe it goes down, maybe it doesn't. Uh, they, have a, they have a whole process. It's not like Phil just did, gets to do you a favor. He's got a, a process to follow. Uh, but that is one opportunity that you can pursue right now. So if you're one of those people whose property tax or property assessment actually doubled, and I have heard from some of those people, uh, you can call. It doesn't matter if you're a full-time resident or not. The pro it's the property owner. So if you're a property owner, you can get in touch with the assessment office and you can, can ask them to reassess. But we have uh, received a, a lot of phone calls and emails and rightfully so, it, it was a, it's a shock to a lot of people uh, and we are very well aware of it. I just wanna make that announcement so that people know those concerns aren't falling on deaf ears and, and we are aware. Having said all of that, uh, are there any other questions or comments from the audience? Everybody's going to rush home and check their assessments <laughs> right now. <laughs> <laughs> if, uh, if there are not, once again, thanks for uh, tuning in and, and showing up, and I'll uh, take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Meeting adjourned. Thank you very much.